everyone. By now you have understood that a diary entry is much more than expression or record of personal feelings. And also you might have understood why Anne Frank's diary has become a public document. If Anne Frank has explained her anxieties and worries within the walls, let's see what was it like in the immediate world when she was living inside the secret annex. Let's go through a few movies to understand the situation and the traumas experienced by people during those times. One movie we would recommend you to watch is The Pianist, a movie that is directed by Roman Polanski in 2002. This movie is an adaptation of the autobiography of Wadisov Spillman, a Jewish Polish radio pianist who lived through these times from 1939 to 1945. The name of the book is The Pianist, the extraordinary true story of one man's survival in Warsaw. 1939 till 1945. The movie The Pianist begins in Warsaw in 1939 Poland at the outbreak of World War II. In three weeks, Polish army was defeated by German army and Spielmann's radio station was bombed while he was on air. Conditions of the Jew in Warsaw quickly deteriorated. The family soon has to move to the ghetto established by the Nazi rule. The Holocaust is starting and the families, though from well-to-do background, had to reduce themselves to subsistence level which means that their conditions were reduced to hand-to-mouth existence. Spielmann takes a job playing piano at a restaurant in the ghetto, turning down an offer from a family friend to work for the Jewish police and the family survives. But living conditions in the ghetto continue to worsen and scores of Jews die every day from disease, starvation and random acts of violence by German soldiers. One night, the family sees the Nazi army march across the street and arrest a Jewish family. The eldest in the family, who was wheelchair bound, couldn't follow their orders and he was thrown out of the balcony and killed. The other family members were gunned down and the rest of them were crushed by the truck of Nazi army. However, the day comes when the pianist's family is selected to be shipped to their deaths at the Treblinka concentration camp. As they are going to their trains, Spielmann is suddenly pulled out from the lines by Isaac Heller, a Jewish man working as a police guard. Spielmann silently watches the rest of his family board the train, never to be seen again. He later blends in with the 10% or so of the Jews that the Nazis kept alive in the ghetto to use for slave labor. Now he escapes from there and finds some friends who takes him to ghetto where other Jews are hidden. There Spielmann occupies a vacant room depending on the food that is smuggled into him by his friends. Spielmann remains in the apartment a few more months until he has an accident breaking some dishes. The noise blows out his cover and he has to flee out of the building and go to a Polish caretaker 
who collects money in the name of Spillman from generous donors and cheats him, leaving him to die in isolation. Spillman gradually recovers to see the 1944 Warsaw Uprising, in which the Poles try to retake the control of their city. Soon the Germans start attacking the building and Spillman has to flee again. Spillman hides in an abandoned hospital, jumps back over the wall into the ghetto, now an abandoned desolate wasteland of bricks and rubble. He stays there, rummaging through the burnt out buildings for something to eat and lives for a while. Until one night, a Nazi officer, Captain Wilm Hosenfeld, finds him. To prove Hosenfeld that he was a pianist, he plays. Hosenfeld, moved by the performance of Spillman, allows Spillman to survive in the attic even after the house is established as headquarters of the captain. Hausenfeld eventually abandons the house with the staff when the Russian army draws closer to Warsaw. Now towards the end of the movie, newly freed Poles walk past Russian prisoner of war camp and Hausenfeld is among the prisoners. The Poles hurl insults at the German through the fence. But when Hausenfeld hears that one of the Poles is a musician, he goes to the fence and tells him that he helped Spillman. But before the help reached, they had departed without a trace. The movie ends with Spillman playing the piano for the radio station. Another movie you can watch is The Boy in Striped Pajamas, directed by Mark Herman in 2008. During the Second World War, eight-year-old Bruno and his family leave Berlin to take up residence near the concentration camp where his father had just become commandant. Unhappy and lonely, he wanders out behind his house and one day finds Schmuel, a Jewish boy of his age. Though the barbed wire fence of the camp separates them, the boys begin a forbidden friendship, oblivious to the real nature of their surroundings. Bruno visits Schmuel before he leaves and learns that Schmuel's father had disappeared after being transferred to a different work gang. Bruno decides to help his friend Schmuel and Schmuel gets a pair of clothing that is the striped pajamas with a cap to disguise Bruno into the camp. Bruno removes all his clothing, digs under the fence and enters into the camp in the striped pajamas. Bruno was surprised to see the people so frail, weak, all in their uniforms and was wondering at the situation there. Bruno and Schmuel were searching inside a hut for Schmuel's father when the army round up and pushed them into a room. Back at the house, the mother and sister discovers the missing of Bruno and report it to their father. The father and the army mounts a search for Bruno and the family dog ends up uh, at the fence finding the clothes of Bruno. The father guesses the situation and instantly runs into the camp in search of his son. Meanwhile, Bruno and Schmuel and other inmates were asked to unclothe themselves in order to take a shower. They are tightly packed into a gas chamber and the lights went off. 
Bruno and Smuel hold the hand together, telling them that they are the best of the friends. And the gas was released. Bruno's father sees that the gassing has already started. He understands the situation and he starts crying out, calling out his son's name. At the fence, the movie ends with the mother and the sister kneeling in despair at the cries of their father. These movies are worth a watch because they will help you deepen your understanding of the agonizing situations in the concentration camp from the perspective of an 8 year old and also an adult survivor. This understanding is essential to understand the trauma experienced by Anne Frank and her fellow beings. Now you all must be ready to watch the movies along with the history books to make your learning experience more enjoyable. Such references will deepen your understanding not only of the facts but also of the human elements, crisis, social circumstances, relationships, exploitation and etc. which are all built into those historical facts. You have now two very interesting resources to watch. They are films. They must definitely captivate your interest. What other texts can you resort to or what other resources can you resort to when you study such texts? Have you heard of oral history? This is what an oral history is. Oral history is a method of conducting historical research through recorded interviews between a narrator with personal experience of historically significant events and a well informed interviewer. The goal is to add details to the historical record. A brilliant example of an oral history is Voices from Chernobyl which is the first book to present personal accounts of a nuclear tragedy. Journalist Svetlana Alexievich interviewed hundreds of people affected by the meltdown from innocent citizens to firefighters to those called in to clean up the disaster and their stories reveal the fear, anger and uncertainty with which they still live. Composed of interviews in monologue form, Voices from Chernobyl is a crucially important work of immense force, unforgettable in its emotional power and honesty. Next time you go for another lesson, don't forget this interdisciplinary approach. Hunt for texts, resources, movies, documentaries, whatever can take you wider and deeper into a text. They are worth it. They will kindle your curiosity, your spirit of inquiry and definitely you will become strong learners who can search independently. This will not only enhance your language skills but also sharpen your critical thinking, your analytical thinking and your confidence to ask questions and to answer queries of other people. We will meet again with another lesson. Till then, it is happy learning from Ms. Reena and Ms. Vinita. Thank you.